Oh my gosh. Okay, we could leave that in. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Kiss and Tell podcast. Today, I have my other co-host with me. We got her on, Sophia. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, Indigo had a little thing, so she um couldn't make it. But I honestly was like, um, with them being my co-host, I was like, maybe I should do two separate episodes with each of them to like establish how I even know them, how we met, like how all that happened. So, um, but a lot of the future episodes will be all three of us because that's kind of why we started was the dynamic of the three of us. So anyways, we're just starting with, um, me and Indigo and now we have me and Sophia because there's just, I've known Sophia for so long. So there's just so many stories, but, um, yeah, we're back and, Today has been a whirlwind. I literally had a five hour class. I came straight here um, and Sophia's like sick. (laughs) Yeah, I've been like chronically ill for like months now. And I know you guys touched base last episode of my little side quest. Oh, yeah. For those who don't know, I'm a little preschool teacher. (laughs) And since I've been working there, I have been so like severely ill. Like. I've been to the doctors, like, just, I don't know what's going on, but these kids have taken, like, years off my life, literally, because I never get sick, like, I'm, and when I do, like, it's, like, mild colds, but, like, I've been, like, dying, like, I don't know what it is. it's just, they're so germy, and they, like, touch everything, like, that's just gonna happen, but, um, yeah, so, I was just, like, I think we should start off with how we met. Yeah. Because we've been friends since like freshman year of high school. Yeah, that's what I did with Indigo too. So I think um, I was friends with like kind of a group and then you became friends with Becky, which was part of the group, I think. Well, and me and Becky have been friends since like fourth grade. Oh, and yeah, you and Yeah, you and Becky met like sixth, like, no, not like seventh, eighth grade. And like, I would always see her like walking around with you, but I was like, who is that? Like, because <laughs> she was always with you. And then freshman year... um we all like started hanging out again and she's like oh yeah you should come to ethan's and i was oh like God, okay yeah. but the whole story with that is so funny because my parents were so strict at the time that i was like how do i tell them i'm going to ethan's house oh my god so- you t- <laughs> the, the for the longest time my house was becky's grandma's house yes like how did they like <laughs> it's obviously like a family home like it is not a grandma's house. And it's just like, how do they even believe that, believe this? And at this time, like, you know, fresh in high school, we were like, oh my God, we'd like smoke a little and like, and they were like drug testing her. And then she would, it was just so funny. Like, it's just like the typical like high school thing, high school experience, but that's kind of like how we met. And then Sophia was just always around since, but but it's because like, she just fit perfectly in. Like, it was almost like we already knew her and she was just coming back over. Yeah, I was, like, the one friend that got introduced to the group that, like, actually stuck. Yeah. Because, like, we have tried to, like, introduce people into the group in, like, high school. And, like, we just had such, like, bad, crazy stories with them. Like, it never ended up good. And, like, you always, like, hear about people that can never keep friends. You're like, okay, maybe they're the issue. Yeah. And I'm like, maybe our group was the issue, but it genuinely never was. Like, the people that were coming in were psychotic. Like... Just like the girl with the boyfriend in the lake, um, the other That's girl, like, thing. I just don't even want to talk about it. It's like so stupid, but just these people were like crazy. And so we just kind of would like fling them off. And then we finally like found like the solid group. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's kind of like how it goes in high school and ever, all of that. And but, like you can see like now, like after high school, like who like we are still in contact with. And that like just says so much like about yeah. our friend group, about like who actually like is there and like who like really is like part of like the real friend group like you can just tell like who sticks around like after like high school is done and i was honestly excited to like leave high school because it was just so much bullshit like all these people and i was just like i know i'm never gonna talk to like 80 percent of these people again but it's kind of interesting like still following them and like seeing what everyone's doing and like where their lives are going but um i feel like you create like most of your lifelong friends like in college well honestly though like high school too like my mom, like all of her like main friends are like from high school. They yeah. grew up together. So um, it just depends. But I was just like thinking today, like, I don't know. I've just been thinking so much. And especially like with college, you're like, this is like so much money. Is this actually what I want to do? Mm-hmm. And it's just like at our age and stuff, there's just so much like insert- uncertainty in life. Like I just like I'm like thinking and even like the podcast or like what I want to do, like where I live, I'm just like. Like, we don't have, like, steady incomes. We don't, 
like there's just so much uncertainty like in this point of life and like what is the point of like life like i always like every now and then in life you'll just have like what am i doing like what yeah is like the a point? little like existential crisis kind of moment and it's just like so hard sometimes because it's just like especially with school and like I really want to um, move to LA, but it's just hard because my school is here and it's like the best school for the degree I want. But, and especially in our generation, this is like the other thing is in our generation, we're like the first generation to be opposing college. Like so many people yeah. we know are not going and people can make it. And it's also part of like the whole Bitcoin, like internet money phase. But I was like, I don't know. I was just raised like you just have to get a degree and just have something to fall back on. And you can go off and do your ventures, start your businesses, like do your podcast. But like I just was like, I'm just going to have to get a degree and then venture off. So I'm I guess I wish um, the school I went to had a location in L.A. I don't know why they don't. I know. I feel like because that's like the school you go to is very like artsy. Like it's all about like anything that has to do with like art related stuff. And I feel like L.A. is like such a place for that. That like yeah. I feel like if your school was in LA, they would do really good. Yeah, like a lot of people need, would enroll there. I, and like um one of my brother's friends, Sophia, she literally was saying the same thing. She was like, I would be in LA right now if they had a location. That was like me too. Yeah. But it's whatever, you know, whatever happens, happens. But um I wanted to talk about like some of my beginning core memories with Sophia. Um Here we go. do you remember <laughs> the, do you remember the night I body slammed the substitute teacher at my house? No. <laughs> what substitute teacher? <laughs> oh my god, we were having a party and my house in high school was like the party house, like everyone would go and Yeah, it was like you would have parties and then like Gavin and his friends would like all come over and have his parties and it'd be like us um, like four freshmen like yeah. in this like junior senior party like <laughs> So like my brother's 2 years older, so it was always like my friend group and then his friend group, but we always like meshed pretty well. But, um, and also I want to go on a side quest, like, like so many parents, like don't allow their parents, like go to, or so many parents don't allow their kids, like go to parties, drink or whatever, because they're like scared. But my parents had the view that they're going to do it anyway. You'd rather them not going to some sketchy house or drinking at the park and like getting hit by a car. Like I would rather them be safe in our basement where I know they're safe. Yes. They may be like drunk, but I know they're safe and I know I can go help them if they need help. So that's yeah. what like I think was so important is like there's the few houses like Jack's house, my house, where we always were like safe, but we could like do whatever. Yeah. And if we ever needed help or like anything, you know, like there's parents right upstairs. Yeah. And so we'll, we'll get into Jack's house in a, yeah, a little later. <laughs> that was like insane. Someone fell through the ceiling. But um someone as my, Becky. Yeah, a good friend. <laughs> <laughs> but um we had a party and you know Do you remember which party it was? I don't know, but I was talking to someone else about this and they remembered who I was talking about. But, you know, I'm like a sophomore thinking I could like drink a whole thing of Svedka. I'm like obviously blacked out. And I but I do remember this. Some a guy, my brother, one of my brother's like friends or is a mutual, just a guy that was there. His sister is actually a teacher and she came to come like find him. And like sometimes people would just come in like and just be, you know, you could tell they're not meant to be there. They're like a few decades too old, but they're just like scouring through the crowd for like the person they're trying to find. And um, I just saw her and she had like, oh, she was just a teacher. And I was just like decided to run at her full speed. And I don't I didn't like fully tackle her, but I kind of like grabbed her with my (laughs) arm and just like pulled her. And she was like, ah, what the fuck? And, I, she and was the, like, the thing is, like, Ethan, like, you are so weirdly <laughs> strong, too. Like, yeah. for someone who just does not do, like, any sports-related thing, no gym, like, you are so strong. And I, I think know. you forget that sometimes. I And it just was so dumb. I was like, why? Like, why would <laughs> I have done that? And I don't think she cared. Like, she just knew we were drunk. But it was just so funny because I'm like, that woman, like, probably thinks about it to this day. Like, the guy that just came out and body slammed her and left. <laughs> And like there was also a girl. I, wish I remember. I, like I shot, just don't remember this. Yeah, yeah. I like <laughs> shot a firework at this girl one time at a party. On it was like an accident, and that was like Fourth of July at our house. Oh, we would like I, I do wars with. But Roman it was like cannibals. an annual thing. Like we got Becky to do it. I've done it. You've done it. Like everyone was just kind of thrown out there and be like, okay, you're gonna get fireworks shot at you. Just run. <laughs> and it was just like it was more my brothers and his friends. Like yeah. the Roman candles you hold, and it's not like a bomb. It's just like phew, phew. 
And um, we kind would of like a sparkler. Yeah, like we it's would not, do. It's not, you're not gonna die. We but. would do like, and then again, alcohol's involved with this. So then I'm like, <laughs> oh my god, I want to do one, and I'm just like, <laughs> ah, and it just like hits a girl in the head, and she got like so mad at me, and and I was just like, okay, well, like you came here, like we do this yeah. every year. It's posted, like everyone knows this. Like I'm like, you came here, like maybe not be outside, but I don't know. I take accountability, like maybe not aiming at her head on accident, but but like you're like. This goes into the conversation of, like, your house, there's always something random so going on. Yeah. Like, I remember one time I came over. I go downstairs, go outside, everyone's hanging out. There's literally one of Gavin's friends was, like, duct tape on your, like, pillar. And I was like, what the hell? It's like, yes. what did I just walk in on? And you guys are like, oh, hey. They were and, like, so, no one's going to acknowledge like, this. Like <laughs> Bizarre. Yeah, they literally just duct taped the girl to, like, our balcony had like pillars you could just this duct taped her and she was there for like five minutes like yeah. how and i'm like who did this whose idea and i'm just like, like it's so gavin and his friends and then but then that's how like we were too like we got ourselves into like such so crazy things and, and i guess as we can talk about jack's house now with the yeah well the randomness that's what like in high school and i don't want to go like too long about this yeah. but um in high school the other like big party house was this guy we knew jack <laughs> and he had like a single mom that I don't want to, she drank a lot. So she was like not there. And she was also like newly single, like out going out, meeting guys. Like, so she wasn't really there, but it was in our neighborhood. So it was like a big house and she, it was just like her and her two kids. And, um, they would just have the biggest parties and she would just come like walking in all mysteriously and act like, just go upstairs. I'm like, did you not just see like the like mm -hmm. hole in your wall or like the throw up on the floor but okay and then um the cops would always come and i actually kind of got to know the mom the mom was so nice and i like always put so much priority in like making a good relationship with like my friend's parents because that's just like important to me and also like so many of the the kids that went there were like rude to her and just like i'm like she's like letting you have your ha she's like letting you guys come here and she's so chill like I'm, I always was, like, helping her clean and just, like, just helping her. I know. We would always get into, like, random conversations yeah. with friends and be like, hey, like, well, how was your night? She's like, good. And we would just, like, hang out with her. Like, well, she was just also very mysterious. Like, there was, in her closet, there was just, like, there would just be, like, a stack of money, a thing of silverware, and a bottle of wine, and, like, a few wigs. And I was like, I wonder, like, I just don't even want to know. But <laughs> you wanna know. the night of the ceiling thing was just, oh, oh my God. God. The cops came like usual and everyone starts scattering either like, upstairs, downstairs, out outside, the windows. Like, like, and I always like would stay because I'm like, I'm like innocent or the, nothing's going to happen. And the mom like knew me. So she'd always be like, no, he's fine. And our, they would always run. And Becky, my good friend, she was like, oh my God, okay, we're going to go upstairs. And, um, and she's she also very paranoid about like the fact that she's like, if I get caught like my college is gonna get taken yeah, away we from me like my parents like this and that but like there's nothing really to worry about because they've never ever like really gone in like they always just kind of like okay yeah like, they shut would shut it down to be honest it was just also like kind of like uh the area where they had nothing better to do but um she was like oh my gosh should i go in the attic because also <laughs> we would just the whole house every room we would just always be hanging out in so like one of the nights we decided to go to the attic so we knew where it was and she was like, oh, my gosh, should I um go and hide in the attic? And I'm like, no, like my dad's falling through. Like you cannot walk up there. Like you have to know where to walk or you'll fall through. Yeah. So the cops are there. I guess she and another girl decided to go in the attic. And then next thing I know, she fell through the ceiling in the mom's bedroom or in her bathroom. Like the bathroom, like little closet. It was thing. like the medicine closet in the bathroom. So then the cops finally leave. The poor mom's like tired. She goes upstairs in her bathroom to like take off her makeup. There's just like insulation all over a hole in the ceiling. And there it she's is. just like, mm. <laughs> she was like trying to be nice, but she was like, this is just kind of like, no, she was being nice. But you, you know, when like a mom's like being nice, but you can tell the second like we leave the, she's going to go off on her son. That was like the vibe. And I just felt so bad. Like we helped her clean it and it was just this whole thing. But and it was so crazy because, like, years later, like, recently, I talked to someone who also, like, would go to Jack's house. And they were like, yeah, like, did you guys hear about the girl who fell through the ceiling? And I was like, yes, it's literally our friend. And he said that after that, like, anything at Jack's house was, like, 
banned. Like it was forbidden. Like yeah, and, that was like the end all. But like also this was an every weekend thing. Like it had gone to the point where like our HOA, the neighbors in the neighborhood, like they like could make them have to move out because she owned the house. Like it's not like she's leasing, but like yeah. it was disturbing the neighbor. Like hundreds of people would go. And I think one of them told me that like their neighbors in the basement like set up their cameras mm -hmm. to look into their basement door and like would send it to the school and like try to get the kids in trouble. Yeah, it was And just, I was like, that's a whole thing. Like, yeah, and but people were just like reckless. Like it's the thing is people don't know like how to have nice things and just and enjoy the house. Enjoy like, you know, being able to like have that luxury. And people literally would like go on the, climb out the window, stand on the roof and they threw like an empty bo vodka bottle off and it like broke right near their door and they like got mad. One time a kid didn't, a kid hadn't, <laughs> This is so funny. A kid hadn't been there before, so he went to the house next door. And, like, you can just walk in Jack's house. So <laughs> they were like, yeah, just walk in. He walks into the neighbor's house and, like, walks around. And then he goes upstairs to the office, and it's just an old guy on his computer. And he's like, <gasps> and the guy saw him. And then he, the guy, the kid just <laughs> ran out and left. And, like, I'm like, that guy probably has no idea who this kid was and, like, still doesn't know. And I was like, it just got too far. So I understand like why that all ended. And we were lucky enough, like we were seniors. So like we were already going to be leaving, but like they all got fucked. Like the juniors that actually went there, yeah. like apparently like there wasn't really parties after that. But um, I want to get into like our LA trips because there's just so much to like we, me and Sophia have gone twice and we went um, the first time in 2020, right? Yeah. It and was then like, the second time last year. I think we were like wearing masks still. Yeah. But I just, like I said, I like love LA and I've just, I'm, anytime I can go, I'm trying to go so I can like learn areas where I may want to move, like make connections, like see buildings I like, this and that. So um, the first time we went, and I hate hotels and stuff. So we always do Airbnbs because it's like a house and it, I have a, it kind of is just more convenient. Like, yeah. And you have like a driveway and um, we and I always have my dog with me. So I also need to have him. So we had or on the first trip, actually, we didn't bring him. But yeah, we rented this house and it ended up it was like in a really good area, like right on Melrose. And um, we and we were going to stay in the hills, but we're like, let's just go like off the hill because then you have to go like up and down the hill. And um, and we were also there because you were looking at colleges oh, there. Yeah. yeah. Before I started going to the school I go to now, um, there was another art school out there that I went to and um, it didn't end up working. And I, I was like also thinking about modeling at this time. And like the guy that was giving me the tour, like told me to lose weight. So I was like, fuck this. Yeah. So, I remember me and, and Brent just, looked at each other and we were both like. <laughs> it's just so L.A. I was like, duh, yeah. he's going to like be like, you need to lose some weight. But um. I was just like, forget this. And not even that. I was like, I have thick skin. I was like, I don't care what he has to say. The school was just genuinely shit. Like it was nothing compared to the one I go to yeah, now. Yeah. And it was more like you were building. Like yeah. you were literally like building. And we were like, okay, this is yeah. not like for you. So um, the house we rented, we did not know this at the time, but uh, like a pretty like successful producer, like he did stuff for like a lot of big artists. Um, Do you remember? It was like. This was also in 2020, so this was more when, like, Lil Mosey was big and, like, all those people, but, like, big artists. And yeah. so it was a house, and it has, like, a gate in the driveway, and then there was, like, a guest house that had a hallway that connected to one of the bedrooms. Um, and the guest house, like, was his little studio. So, so people yeah. People were in there, like, recording and stuff. He and where me and Ethan were sleeping were right connected to the door that would yeah. go into the and studio. It had, like, two bedrooms, and he... um had a studio back there and he was like, you won't ever see me, but I'll just be coming in and out and we record and stuff. And we're like, okay, fine. Like he didn't really mention that in like the description, but we're like, okay, again, like this is fine. Like he was also really chill. So we're like, it's okay. And it's literally his house. But um, like these people would come to record and me and Sophia would just hear in our bedroom, like the raw version. And it's just so bad. Like me and Sophia would like, we're also in LA. Like we got weed. We were like, like, but listen, can, well, continue. and there is just, they would bring like their baby mamas with them, their kids, like different people. And you would see them like outside. Cause like, it would be like the driveway. And then there was like a little like fire pit area and, basketball and then like hoop. basketball, like a hot tub. And they would just be all like around the fireplace area, just smoking. And we would come home and be like, what is going on? And that's what kind of made us like annoyed at that point, because 
we're like, okay, it's one thing to like be in your studio. Like we don't see you, but to have people in your studio. And then we like paid for that space, like the fire pit, the hot tub, like the basketball area, like they're the, the guests that the, the artist would bring would be fully using that. And I was like, okay, this is like a little weird. And, um, we had like a G wagon and it was like dripping oil in his driveway. And he was like, texted us, like put cardboard down. And we're like, okay. I mean, again, we understand, but like, it was just weird. And, um, it had a possum problem. Like one day we got home and there's just a wet possum in a cage. In a cage. And he was like, hey, sorry, man, I'm trying to get rid of these things. And I was like, whoa. And they're like, sp- we're spraying it with like a water hose yeah, or something. I felt so we were bad. like, oh my gosh. Like, but it ended up being like fine. It's just in our bedroom, they would be recording and like it was just horrible. Like the stuff we would hear was so bad. Like, like on auto Because he would work with like big name people, but also like if you're paying him, like he's going to re- do a recording session with you. Mm. So like it was definitely someone like up and coming, some yeah. SoundCloud guy in there because they was yeah. just so bad. Like, yeah, he would do like big name people, but like any these people were like paying him full price so he's like oh, i'm gonna produce you but it's not gonna you know that's like your journey to make it go somewhere yeah. i'm just like producing this so the people like a lot of the ones we saw were like just i don't know who like soundcloud rappers and that was like the issue it was just like kind of annoying but um there was like a whole incident we had this g-wagon and one morning like melrose there's like alfred's um coffee on melrose place and so I woken up a little earlier and Sophia was like, I'm just going to like stay behind and like get ready. And, and I was already ready. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go get us like coffees and like breakfast burritos. So I go and it's like all parallel parking there. And, um, I like parallel parked when it got the coffee, um, came back out and a guy pulled up and he was like, Hey, can I take your spot? And I was like, yeah, just give me a second to like start the car, put the food down. Um, and he was like, okay. So then he backed up and was parallel to the car that was behind mine. And so then he had his hazards on, but he was taking up the lane. So then I go to pull out and this like lady in this like big Range Rover decides to pass him. So then as I'm pulling out, we just like hit and it literally was like a big hit. And, um, the, the car started spraying oil. It was like overheating, turn off engine. So I like turned it off. She was like over there, like acting like she had a concussion and um, her like son came in another Range Rover and they're like cussing me out. Like, you you need to be getting out of the car and talking to us. Like, what are you doing? And I was like, I was like, sir, sorry, I'm not from here. Like, can you give me a minute to like call like my dad or the police? And they're like, are you not from here? Like in L.A., the police won't come unless someone's dead. And I was like, I know, but just give me a second. And so I was like, okay, they're trying to say it's my fault. So that's why I was trying to kind of take precaution about like how I'm going about this. So um, I ended up getting out and she, we basically determined, I was like, okay, just give me your insurance, your license. I'll give you mine insurance and my license. And we kind of went on our ways and I had to um, get the car towed. But then we hadn't like, and the G-Wagon was like put part of the experience. Like in LA, you just like do it. And it's like just part of the vibe. And um then we had to, we just rented like a normal Nissan because we're like, we're not renting another like yeah. nice car after what happened. And then we were like stuck in this Nissan, like driving to Calabasas and stuff. And it was just so funny. I remember that morning I woke up to like literally, I think you had just sent me the picture, like nothing <laughs> else but the picture. And I was like, oh my God, like, of course. And then yeah. you came back like so upset. Like we were just at the little kitchen table, like eating our our breakfast burrito was like so cold and we're like, well, what now? Yeah. I just was like, so I was just so annoyed because I was like, it truly was her fault, but it was so hard to explain. And then like, a, like weeks later, I found a video of like a real accident that happened. That was exactly what happened. So that like saved me like in explaining it to people or insurance. And it was her fault because she should not have crossed the double lines and like hit me. She should have stayed and waited. So that was like a whole thing. And it kind of like, ruined the vibe for like a day or two but we were fine but then the second time we went to la we decided to do an airbnb in the hills with our friends this time yeah and then we brought like a few friends and um we got a g-wagon again there was no crashes this time but um it like the hills are so tight and like it wouldn't even fit in the garage it was like a whole thing but um there's just some funny stories like we i feel like because we went out three times we should talk about like each night like the first night we were like okay where do we go so me and Ethan were literally like on TikTok like searching up like 
fun places to go out in LA with your friends, like yeah. bars, clubs. And we found this one in downtown LA. Oh my god. It gosh. was like well, we need like a preface. So yeah. there's like, you know, the main clubs in LA, Bootsy Bellows, Poppy, Hyde, EP and LP, um, um, Barney's Beanery, but also we were underage, so we're like with fake IDs. And a lot of those places in general, you have to have promoters. And so we're like, there's no way like we're going to be able to do this. So then I was like texting like a girl I knew there and um, a few other things. And it's just hard, like especially in L.A., like even with a real ID, like you kind of have to have like a blue check or have a promoter for yeah, them to like let you in. That's LA just is. how it is. Yeah. And so we like found on TikTok this damn Hispanic club that was in downtown LA, which I did not know at the time, but that was like, you know, 30 minutes from the Hills. So we're like, okay, let's just do it. Like we want to have fun. The last time we were in LA, we didn't go out. Um, so my dad like drives us and drops us off because we didn't want to have to like Uber to downtown LA or we wanted to get dropped off and then Uber only one way back. And it's just like the most dinkity little <laughs> Hispanic club like, in like the middle hole in the wall kind of place. But like, the line outside was like a mile long. Like yeah. there was so many people outside. We were like, okay, we're not going to get in. But then like the line starts moving, like whatever, whatever we get in. And it's like such like a random mix of people. Like there's like old people in there, like the occasional like young people. like. And there, <laughs> there's like in LA, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Like, there's always women with, like, little Hispanic women holding flowers outside for you to buy. And they like were grilling. in the club. And also, yeah, the hot dog ladies. They were out there, too. And we, like, get outside. Finally, we were able to, like, stay for an hour. So I was like, okay, it was worth it. It was, like, not really the vibe we were wanting. Like, it's definitely, like, not what we were wanting. But but at least we went out. Yeah, like, we, we went out. We, like, had out. fun. And, um... We got we get outside and we meet this special gem of a girl named Mary, Magdalena. Mary Magdalena. And she um was telling us she just recently transitioned and um she was still like in the beginning stages so I kind of I could tell and I mean that's like fine but I could tell and um so I was like oh my gosh you're so cute like you know you're like funny and she was like saying she lived in the valley and if you don't know like the valley like there's like songs about it. Like it's just like kind of known as like the more like people that can't like be in Hollywood have to go over the hill to the valley because it's cheaper. And she was like, yeah, I'm living in the valley right now. I'm couch surfing. Um, she was like sharing a twin bed with like some random person she met, like just just getting through it, honestly, like just yeah. trying to get to the L.A. experience. Yeah, she was like trying to like work it up and then she had the like little metal pocket book of cigarettes and was like offering us them and was like trying to speak to the flower lady in Spanish and it just wasn't working. And we're like, we just have to go. And I think Magdalena's like Uber was there and she was going <laughs> back to the Valley to a new couch. But that was just like a funny, like character we met. And, um, we can honestly skip over that big. Oh, well that's the night like Christian like died, but we have to talk about that. That, that was like crazy. Um, we went to like, a, this was actually in Hollywood. This was like a huge like techno EDM like rave club. It was. It's actually like really known. I forget yeah, the name of it, but like exchange. it's really, yeah. There's been like big DJs yeah. that perform there. And um, so this one you had to get tickets for. And like normally with these places, like if you get tickets, you're more likely to get in, especially like underage or and that whole thing. So um, this was like right on Hollywood Boulevard and um. We like get in and one of the friends we brought with us, Christian, decided to not pregame with like shots, but red wine. Red wine. <laughs> Out of all things to pregame with, red wine. Like literally yeah. before we even left, he was like mixing up his words. What did he say that one night? He, he was, was like, like, I need me a wine of glass. Yeah. And we're, we're like, like Christian. <laughs> and so he drank like three or four glasses to pregame. And he is more he's like more a little lightweight. So I think it kind of got to him. But. We get there and he also was like newly in a like talking stage or relationship with this girl. So she um, I think they were just talking and she was like confused. Like, what are you what is your guys's plan? Or I think he was texting her. Yeah. Who and knows? The three of us, there's two guys with us. So me, Sophia and the other guy were like, where is he? Like, where did he go? Because he literally disappeared. Like we went in there all together. Like 
we went to the front, just messing around, dancing. There was like a section like right next to us. Christian slips his little hand through the rails, grabs like a big thing of water, Shh, I, and like gives it to all of us. And then like we have to deal with it. And then he runs away. I think no, I think he took a thing of champagne, and there was like a bottle of liquor or champagne or something, or yeah. maybe it was water. But he was with us for like fifteen minutes, and then we um, gone. He disappeared, and. We were like searching all over. He wasn't answering. So then I was texting the girl. I was like, was he talking to you? And she was like, yeah, he said he was, he went to the gas station. I was like, the fucking gas station. I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> so then I was like, I don't, I was like, my, our night was already like our previous night out was already kind of shitty. Like it, I was like, I don't want to ruin my night, like looking for him. Like, but it was already like about a close. So I was like, she, she was like, I think he's fine. So we're like, let's just stay until like they're about to close. And that's only like 30 minutes. He'll be alone. Um, so then we all like decide to go out and start looking for him. And we like, we're texting my dad who's at the house. We were like, did he come home? Cause she was like, I think he said he was Ubering home. And I was like, he doesn't know the address and he doesn't know the door code. I, I was like, I don't think he does unless we send it in the group chat. Mm-hmm. And we're like, what? Like, where would he be gone? And then we're like, okay, well maybe he's like making it home. Like we're, we're just going to Uber and like, if he does not show up, then we're going to have to, like, come back and, like, look for him. And um, I think our Uber was literally there. And then he walked. You bought a hot dog. Yeah. I bought a hot dog. I will say I will never go home without buying something from those street vendors. Even yeah. here in Atlanta. Like, outside yeah. of Lost Dog, I will be coming home with my plate full of tacos. But, yeah. like, our Uber was there. And then out of nowhere, we're all just, like, talking. Christian walks up. As if he wasn't missing for like an hour. And we were like, where were you? He was like, yeah, I was at the subway down the street. And we were like, what? But it wasn't like he he was like kind of out of it. You could tell like he had just like, he was like asleep on the sidewalk at yeah. the subway. Like not just in there. Like he was asleep or like throwing up like dead. So we're like, oh my God. We're like, okay, he's okay. And it was the weirdest timing. Like he literally walked up as our Uber was getting there. And we we're like, let's just get in the Uber. Like he couldn't even really explain he kept on the way home. We we're like driving up the windy ass hills. And he's like, <laughs> we, our house was right by the Houdini mansion. And it was just like the joke the whole time, like Houdini was going to come and like, like possess us or something. But he was like, I'm so sick. Like I'm going to throw up. I was like, one more minute. What? Yeah, it was one like, more minute right for there, 10 we're minutes. We're right there. Like just, just around the corner, like just hold it in for like literally one more minute. Like, please. And he, um. He ended up like when we got back, he like threw up off the balcony, like down the hill and like ended up going to sleep. But it was just so funny. But my favorite story was the third night we went out, we tried to go to EP and LP and we go and they're like, they're like, he's like on these are fake. It's not going to work. And one of the guys we were with was like, what do you mean it's fake? And we're like, what do you mean it's yes. fake? Like it is fake. He like was let's like just trying take... to argue. And, and we're I... like, you cannot argue with this man. Like we have fakes. Like you cannot sit here and be like, what do you mean? It's fake. Like it's yeah. fake. And that's what we were like. He's being like, they can take them. Like, I'm like, he's being nice. Like let's accept the fate and, um, and just leave, find somewhere yeah. else. I don't know. And so then we're, we're just walking around and we're like, Oh yeah. Earlier, we saw this bar that had like some people in the line. Like, let's go try to find mm-hmm. it again. And we're, we were still like in Hollywood Boulevard, like yeah. walking around. It was probably like up the street, like or up the street around the corner. Mm-hmm. So we go, we find it, we get in line and they let us in. And the place was like, when you walk in, it was just like a big, long hallway. And then yeah. you turn the corner. There's like an outside courtyard with like a stage, a little fountain in the middle a bar and then you go into the side that like the actual place and it's like a vampire layer. It was like it is literally a vampire layer. Well we had got there and I saw the bouncer and it was like a skinny little white guy like with tattoos like holding a vape. I was like, okay, we're good. And then he like lets us right in and um we yeah like very vampire like red crushed velvet like pitch black everyone there is like like fully goth and emo and the music very much a hot topic yeah and so we're like oh my god we're like i don't know how we ended up here but we're like let's just embrace it like enjoy the night 
and um it went pretty good like we drank we like went outside and then we went inside and it was like pretty fun and then we get towards the end of the night and like Sophia had heels on and she was like I cannot walk like I'm just gonna sit down and that's the thing that I should have known like every time I've tried to wear heels going out I ripped them off. Yeah. Like I end up barefoot by the end of the night. Unless they're like the boots that are holding your foot, like strappy heels. Like it's so uncomfortable. They're, they're, uh, they're in my hand. They're flying in the air. Yeah. They're somewhere, <laughs> but besides my feet. And so I, she, there's like little booth and I see this nice little like Hispanic guy and, I, and he looked like visibly no. um gay to me. I was like, okay, no. he's probably gay. And I was like, he'll be, I was like, he'll be Mm-mm. safe she, he'll kind of like take care of her he was like oh are you okay like do you need water and i was like okay he's good so i can kind of go was off. your first mistake yeah. just even like assuming that this la guy was gonna be like nice and the vampire lair yeah Out of all places the vampire lair and i was so fucked up and i was like telling them i was like i was like they left and i was like guys please come back i was like please come back please come back please come back yeah and they're like no we're, we're just outside we'll come back later like you're fine like we'll come to you you guys never come. But no, we never were, come. this was my like thing. I was like, Sophia, we're like 20 feet outside. Like if he's really like going to do something, like just run to us. And like, she like couldn't get up. And then I, the same thing was happening to me upstairs. Like I was upstairs alone. You were downstairs with this guy. And the other two guys were just like outstairs, like frolicking around. So I was like trying to figure out what was going on. <laughs> and then I get like texts from Sophia. Like she's so mad. Like something happened. So then we go outside and. <laughs> the Hispanic guy decided to give her a foot massage because her feet were hurting from the heels. Amazing. Like he's taking care of her, got her some water. The turn <laughs> The turn of events was that this LA man sucked my toes in the vampire lair in front of just everyone. He just decided the to foot massage turned crazy. A little suck. He just picked them up and just was like and Which is like <laughs> honestly even insane to think about. But like, because what were like, you? Were you pulling your foot away or just embrace? Like, what were you doing? <laughs> yeah. Like honest- at that in that moment, I was literally just like shocked. Yeah. Because first of all, that has never happened to me. Like even like sober on like a normal basis, have yeah. gotten my toe sucked. Yeah. So like the fact that like this turned into like a toe sucking fiasco. I was like, what the and fuck do I do? this was like do? in the middle of the club. Like I'm imagining who saw this and. And also just the mindset of like, yes, I'm going to suck her toes right yeah. now. And My, like, f- I oh, was walking around barefoot in the bar. She was walking around barefoot for a while. Like her feet were black. I was they like were that black. guy. I was like that guy got. So, who like, knows what so he much. got from this LA I was like, bar. That is disgusting. And. Um, so then Sophia like got mad and yeah, we were like I, leaving and she's like crying and she was like, why would you like leave me? And I was like, Sophia, that's not my issue. Like I was literally, I thought he was like a gay guy, like trying to like take care of you and just like sit with you and talk. And she's like, why would you think that? And then yeah, like the guys, like, like Dylan and Christian were like, guys, stop. Like, it's not that big of a deal. And then we kind of got over it. Like it was fine, but we were like arguing and, um, I was just like, it's not like the biggest deal. Like, well, like I was like, I don't know. And then we wake up. Yeah. We wake up the next morning and there's like a lovely DM to Sophia. There's a lovely DM from Mr. Toe Sucker. And we had the screenshot, but God knows where that is. But to summarize it, he basically was like, hey, love. He said like, Like, hey, sexy. I enjoyed sucking those toes last night. Would love to see you again. And And then then, like the cringy emojis, like fire emoji, wet squirt emoji. Like, and I was just like. Oh my god! And then we're like, okay, let's like actually investigate like who this guy is. So we go to his Instagram. He had posted a story. Come to find out, he's like an Amazon delivery guy. And we were like, that is just like the cherry on top of this little situation. Because like, of course, like, no, of course, he couldn't be like a normal. I mean, not that working for Amazon, it just, it's just part of the plot. Like, it just, of course, like he worked for Amazon and like he <laughs> lived in the valley too. Like he posted that, and I was just like. OMG, like it is just not real. That was it. I was like, I have to go and rinse everything yeah. of what had just happened. No, you're fine. He's the one like yeah. needing to like Listerine. Well, his mouth. I have like trauma from that. So maybe yeah. I'm not fine, but he I got honestly to the end like of it. it is weird and I'd be annoyed, but I would just like kick them in the face or like, I don't know. <laughs> like that's their choice. Like, you know, 
But like, I know that is, but also you were like, you were like drunk and alone. So like you were a target. So that's why like that was hard for you. So that is like weird, but. Our little toe sucking fiasco. So I wanted to talk about, should we talk about the guy, the like the cherry candy weed and the bomb? Or should we talk about um, the escort rings and. <laughs> Our two topics to talk about. We'll, we'll cut this out, but it's just so we can decide. We can talk about our cherry candy. Okay. So another like core memory with Sophia, and this is just so funny, is we would always go on um, beach trips together. Yeah, the normal high school like beach trips that are, like everyone would. There's this place called Seaside. It's like Seaside, Rosemary, those areas, and everyone in high school would migrate down there like and for this, this just one week especially the southeast so like yeah south carolina georgia alabama like all those kind of states like all those colleges and high schools all go to the panhandle and um so everyone would go to seaside mm-hmm. and this was i think our first one down there this was the first trip we did yeah it was our i think our junior year because our second yeah. one was our senior year and we we got like a pretty big group together it was like a lot it was just like seven of us I yeah. think and and your aunt Shelly yeah so we would a lot of the times bring my aunt Shelly because like my mom would be with us all year or whatever so she was like if you think like, you my aunt would love to go because she didn't travel much so she was like you will go and watch them and then I kind of get a break too and then also like my dad was working so it just made sense for yeah. my dad's sister Shelly to go and also I feel like at the end of the day it is just smarter to have like a parent there just like someone yeah of like sanity who like can just control all of us and be like listen like let's chill out a little bit yeah and that's the thing is like a lot of these groups would go alone and then they would end up getting like kicked out because the owners would find out they're kicked all like out, 17 years old arrested like, like beer funneling in yeah. the fucking bathroom but um so and then shelly was just also the perfect person because she would like take shots with us and like smoke with us but she was like also like there if we needed something so mm-hmm. it was just the perfect thing and um oh my god um one of our good friends thomas is just like a complete stoner and like we me and sophia like have always like you know it's just like high school it's gonna happen like you smoke here and there it's just that's just like the life experience like but um thomas was like always a stoner and like just loved to smoke and so he brought like weed with him and this was like a strain called cherry candy right cherry candy cherry cherry something yeah cherry something we oh my god we it was like the first second or third night like in the beginning yeah and um i think it was like one of our i think it was the second night because we were just at the house like all day just chilling like it was just like one of those like chill nights that we had and we went on the porch and we were like on all smoke like we were just hanging out at the house and we're like yeah like be fun we can all talk and like hang out and um aunt shelly decides to join us (laughs) And she, um, she, we all like smoke and she like hits it and she's like hacking up a lung. I'm like, Shelly, shut up because we're like, these houses were close. I'm like, they're going to smell it or hear it, the coughing. And she's just like literally hacking and I'm just like, go inside. And then she's just running around and we all thought she was Elmo or something. She was, she looked like Elmo. We were, I, I have like. A memory of us just like running from her because we were like this is so scary (laughs) because she was like running around with us but then so yeah we like smoke the night goes on (laughs) work she is like a big um tv person like the history channel this and that like it's always on so she we gave her the master bedroom on the main floor and then the rest of us were upstairs so that Mm -hmm. we could stay up if we wanted to and she could be like alone so then like everyone's kind of like doing stuff some people go to the room some people are eating and me and Sophia decide to go down to like make a good sandwich. And like, of course, just me and Ethan going down there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, Shelly was in her room with like the History Channel and like full blast. But we, me and you were just like, hi, like it didn't register to us Not that she all. was watching to t- TV. Like it never registered to us. Because like in that moment, like especially when you're high with someone, like it's kind of just like you two and like you kind of just forget about everything else. Like yeah. you're more focused and like, what is going on in the moment and like everything around you isn't really like connecting the dots to your mind like it's not processing and 
So me and Sophia like made our sandwiches. We're sitting in the living room eating our sandwiches and her bedroom door is like right there. Yeah. And we were like in silence, like literally just eating like in silence for some reason. And there is like, no, we were like fine. We were kind of like eating so that we could go to bed, like have some food in our stomach. And we, me and Sophia are just sitting here and we randomly hear like three, two, one. <gasps> and then me and Sophia are like, look at each other and we're, and we're like, like <gasps> And we're like, and I was like, get down. So then me and Sophia run and you, dive. Yeah, we're literally diving on the ground. Ethan's like doing somersaults. I'm like jumping over him. And we both like go into the bathroom. We're there for like a second. We look at each other. And we're like, wait, what the fuck just <laughs> happened? Yeah, because we were like, what? Why did we think like me and her both thought it was like someone was about to like ram through the door or and a like, bomb was going to go yeah, off. And it, we both heard. Three, two, one. <laughs> so then we're like, okay, the bomb. We were like, we have to get down. And then we like kind of got in the bathroom <laughs> after like diving on the floor. And we're like, wait, what is yeah, happening? We had to like group for a second. Cause we're like, this was just like, and then, actually like, what was this? And then the people upstairs said they thought someone got shot. And I was like, what is going on? I was like, literally it was just the TV. Like it was just, and it the was TV. so real. Like I fully believed a bomb Me was too. about to go off. We were off. literally diving under like the furniture. <laughs> It was, I think the sandwich like fell. It was just like so funny. But that was just like one of the funniest stories we always reference because it was just the f craziest thing. And it's even crazier the fact that we both like heard the three, two, one, and then just had the idea to take cover. Like to just take like who was going to bomb us? Seriously, who was going to bomb us? No one. Also, a critical part of this beach story is that... um. One of the girls we were with was like single and oh, we were in a bus, not an actual bus, but like a 16 passenger van just because it made sense. Like we could have got a suburban or drove like two cars, but those vans just to pile everyone in, like throw yeah. all the luggage in. It just made sense. Like it was ugly, but it was very like easy. And honestly, I was like, it, I it added to like our whole spring. Like it added to like the plot of our whole spring. It made like it this like little bus. It made it funnier. Exactly. Because it had like no tent. Like we're just riding around. Like people we knew would see us riding in this. Like everyone else had their little Jeeps. You know, their yeah. like their normal cars they had. And then we would pull up to the beach in our bus. Literal bus. Like it was a big van. But a critical part of this story was that a girl we were with was single. And um, she had met. In Seaside, it's like all the teenagers just get drunk and then you all like walk around the Seaside area and just meet each other, decide whose house, like people have parties. So that was kind of the vibe. And we were like pretty drunk. And um, I'm trying to remember how she met him. I think we met up with some of our friends. I think he was with those friends. I think if I remember correctly, something like that. But and um, he was she was like, guys, please, like. Because I had rented the house. They had all paid me, but it's under my name. But I don't know. She just also asked me. So she was like, um, she was saying, she was like, can I like, please bring him back? Like, do you care? And I was like, I mean, he was just like a little white guy. I was like, I don't really care. But like, why? Like, he has to sleep here. And also, we had screwed up. And our house was like 10, 15 minutes from Seaside. It wasn't like in Seaside where it's all walkable. So I was like, he's going to have to stay the night. There's no like Ubering or white riding back. Yeah. So then we were all like pretty drunk and we, um, you know, are driving home. He like, we let him in. We're like, whatever. And one of the guys we knew brought like a weed pen and they were like mm -hmm. hitting it. And this guy that she brought, first of all, was very drunk, but then didn't smoke and decided to like chief the weed pen and then throws up ramen noodles. He was sitting directly behind me. And he threw up on my wallet. Oh. He threw up <laughs> on my wallet. That. Yeah, no, it was disgusting. He threw up. It was ramen noodles. So then I was just pissed off. And we were like, not on like a freeway, but a highway. Like it's 50 miles per hour, like two lanes. I think we had just left like the little like seaside area. So then we pull over on the side of the highway and he was like, I'm just going to get out. He just jumps out. We shut the door and just drive off. And I was like, and we just weren't really thinking about it until we got home. We're like, we were like. There is no like sign of life for like a few miles each way. So we're like, this guy was just drunk and high, just threw up and we left him on the side of the highway. And I was like, oh my God, now I feel bad because that's yeah, like dangerous. We, we but were like, wait, like, but then I think just he texted her in the morning. He said he like 
ended up walking home. No, or something remember weeks and weeks later, we found out we met one of his friends like randomly, and they said he ended up fa- falling asleep in the grass for a little bit, and I then don't he that. woke up when it, the sun was rising and like called an Uber and figured it out. But he slept on the side of the highway because we left him. But I don't want to say like we're bad people because we left him. Like maybe don't hit the weed pin 10 times if you don't smoke and maybe don't like throw up. Like maybe tell me to pull over so you can get it outside of the car. And then now I was just annoyed at this girl because I was like, okay, you have to clean this up. Like I'm not doing this. Yeah, I made her scrub to death on my wallet. I was like, this was the cause of you. I'm not going anywhere near that. Clean it, please. So then it became part of the joke was like, oh, she's with the throw up guy. And I don't think we ever saw him again. But no, that was no just way like, we would ever see this again. guy is probably like thinking the same thing. Like, remember the time? He probably may not even remember. He may have just woken up on this. Like, imagine, like last he remembered, he was just in Seaside at the pavilion hanging out. And then he wakes up on the side of the highway. Like how the- But like, f- I imagine like, just like you driving also, you're just going down the little highway. You know, you're looking around. You see just a guy on the side of the highway just like sprawled out. Like, Yeah, that could have been like, he could have got like hit or I don't know. I don't want to think about it. He's alive and well, and he probably laughs about it now. Like, again, this is just like the high school shit that goes on where you're just like learning and dumb. Like, reasonably, we should have just turned around and took him home and not let him come home with us. But um it's fine he survived but that was a really crazy story i don't think i've ever told you this and it's just so weird okay i think i've told you a bit about it but you don't know Uh like the full story but there was like a moment in a while like i wanted to do modeling like i'm still not opposed to it but it just never really like worked out or happened and um my dad had a friend who had met a girl And she was a model. They Mm -hmm. had like met out at dinner. It was like my dad's friend met her and she was like a model. And she was like talking about that. And he was like, oh, my God, like a good friend of mine, his son was looking to do modeling. So she was like, "Um, yeah, I do like I've done like all sorts of photo shoots. And Mm -hmm. um, she had like gorgeous hair. She's like, I do mainly like L'Oreal. Yeah. And so my dad was like, let me put you in contact with her. Like maybe she can help you or get your portfolio started like this and that. And so I got in contact with her and I like fully believed it. And although she was like in a walker and she'd gotten into an accident, um, like a bad car accident and like had messed up her body. Mm-hmm. And she also had claimed like in the neighborhood next to mine, it was like a really nice neighborhood, like nothing under like $5 million. So she claimed she lived there and, um, she was like, oh, yeah, like I had artists fly in to do design the house. Um, She was like just saying like very hyping her like lifestyle up. Oh, mm-hmm. we took the PJ, me and my friends, like private jet. Like and I was like, OK, like don't care. Oh, I, I flew doctors in to like come and help me for this. And I was like, OK, whatever. Like, again, mm-hmm. it's fine. Like maybe she made a lot from L'Oreal. And she was like, we should meet for dinner so that I can like really run this down with you and like just have a drink, like a margarita and talk. So Mm -hmm. we go to like Hacienda, the Mexican restaurant in our town. And um, good old Hacienda. (laughs) she's just being like so weird. Like she ordered the weirdest drink and they made it wrong. And she's like, I can't even drink it. Like it's just so wrong. Did she come in with her walker? Yeah. And, um, And I was like, also like, I'm also really into like architecture, real estate. So I was like, wait, which house is yours? Cause those houses are really neatly built. Mm-hmm. and she like couldn't find it and i was like that's weird and like she um, couldn't just type in her address no and because she okay. was t- i was like show me i'm doing it into your design like show me yeah. all of these amazing decorations that you fucking flew people in to do couldn't like find it and i was like okay we like have dinner like she went to the bathroom i needed to like wheel her out and, <laughs> and like because she drank oh. and um she we, drank, he, we she get out wheel herself out no and then <laughs> we get out to like our cars and she's like wait let me do some like um she's like let me do some like candid shots of you and like took like a bunch of pictures of me and then outside hacienda yeah outside of like the mexican restaurant just because she was like i could send these to some agents just because they can see like your posture like this and that okay and she gets in her car and she drives it with like she drives it like with hand controls And I'm, like, kind of behind her because our neighborhoods are next to each other. She's, like, driving. And the whole time she's driving, the brakes are on. And then, like, she was not driving right. I was, like, this girl's about to crash. Like, I was, like, what the fuck just happened? 
So then later that night, like we would text a lot too, like just about life. She was trying to get a divorce like this and that. And she was just genuinely trying to, I think, help me get into modeling. So then she was like, oh my gosh, just got home. It's so nice outside. I'm laying by my pool, like love it here. And then sends me a picture. It's like a California mansion, like palm trees. And I was like, oh no, no, something is off. I, I'm like, a am a, uh, I love Google reverse image searching because people do this shit all the time. Mm-hmm. I reverse image search it. It says the topic pops up beautiful mansion backyard. So then I'm like, I'm going to mess with her. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so into real estate. I just saw this house for sale in Arizona. And she was like, oh my God, that's my friend's Joy's house. How did I send that to you? Oh and I was my like, God. Okay. So she's full of shit. And then she's sending me all these modeling pictures of her, but she wouldn't include her face. She's like, when you do modeling, they own the they own the rights to it. So you can't even hang it in your house. You can't post it. You can't have your face. And I was that like, doesn't even make sense. That doesn't though. make sense. Not so at I all. was like, but maybe like big companies like L'Oreal, they do own the rights to the pictures. Like you could repost it from L'Oreal's Instagram, but whatever. So I'm like, let me reverse image search some of these pictures. They're all like different ladies on the internet. And I was like, oh my God, this woman, like, I was like, maybe from the crash, like she had a few loose screws. Like she genuinely, I was like, cause what the fuck is the point of that? Like, she's not making money from it. She's not getting anything out of it. She was helping me. I was like, maybe she's lonely and like needed friends. That's what I was going to say. Cause it sounded more like she was texting you cause she wanted the help. Like Mm -hmm. this is so random. I know it's so random. I've never really like told people, but I was just like, it was just so crazy because I was like, this girl is like so twisted and like, I'm, she was and like she, 50. Did she, did she have like a good rep? Because I'm confused on like how. I know. And that's the thing too is I knew her name, looked her up. There's nothing about her besides a GoFundMe for her crash. So it's like this so-called like millionaire that has flying private jets, flying doctors in is having to have a GoFundMe for her surgeries. I was like, okay, this is like a complete bullshit. And I was like, this is just like weird. Like. What is she getting out of it? And not to mention, I'm like 18 years old and she's like 50. Yeah. And I was like, was there like sexual interest there or something like that? was just weird. Which is what I was going to say. Like, who knows? Like, because there's like so many people out there that like do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fully. Yeah. A hundred percent. But I was like, that's just like, that's weird. Like, so I literally, I blocked her and everything. I don't know where she is, if she ever got the divorce. Also, like, you can find people's addresses very easily. I looked up her name. Her address was, like, in Buford, and it was, like, a very normal house. And she, um, so I was, like, that's probably where she lives. I was, like, I'm not going to take my time to drive by her house and see if I have, she has the car outside, like, if it is her house. She really committed to the bit, though, like, driving down. Yeah. Yeah, she drove down our street. And then I was, like, I questioned, like, should I follow her and see if she actually turns in that neighborhood? Because you have to, it's gated. You can't get in without, like, the buzzer. So I was like, if she can't get in, then she doesn't live there. But I was like, again, I don't care enough. Like, like whatever. And she even like went out of her way to say like, she was like, yeah, I have like a Range Rover and this Porsche 911 I just sold. And, and she was like, I'll drive some of them sometimes. And every time I saw her, she was in the same like older Mercedes SUV. So I was like, I just, it was all adding up, but it was very believable for like a while but this only went on for like two months, but mm-hmm. it was just so weird. And I was like, she has all those pictures of me in her phone. I was like, this is like weird. Your candid pictures. And outside she was of like, Sienna. also, yeah, she was saying like, you know, cause I was also like very in for like skincare modeling, yeah. like anything like that, like, you know, poses like that. Um, I was taking ones where you could see my collarbones and stuff like kind of cut off, but I was like, yeah, you like that is weird. And I wonder like how many other people she's like doing that to. Or yeah. did it too. And and it's just like my dad's friend that met her fully believed she was like a model. She like had huge diamond earrings that were like, now I know we're obviously fake. But she was like, yeah, like I got these with like one of my first, first big paychecks for modeling. And I'm like. For L'Oreal. And like, it, <laughs> yeah, L'Oreal, they have no idea who she is. And she did have like gorgeous hair. So I was like, that's why I was convincing but, her gorgeous uh, hair is what got you. But so no, she was working for L'Oreal. But like I no, like it was like very nice extensions. <laughs> oh like I God. can tell like shitty extensions and shitty like dyes. Like she had it done very nicely. So I was like, maybe she does. Or also I wouldn't put it past her to like spend her last paycheck to like look that way. So I fully believed it. I wonder what she really does. <clears throat> Who knows? I feel like we can get into 
like when I was like a senior, I still have the pictures. Like I went out in my meadow in my backyard and my mom took like pictures of me like laying in the grass, like for like Calvin Klein, like inspired, like she was like, yeah, she was like, um, reach in your car and act like you're like grabbing stuff. And she was just like in her car because she couldn't stand. She so, was, the fact that she was taking all these in her walker. Yeah, no, she was sitting in the car like with her legs out and like the handlebars that she drove with. And she was just like on her Samsung with like the flash going. And I was like. And the pictures were such bad quality. I was like, what are they going to... I know. I can just... It, it's just the way that like, I know what the parking lot looks like and like everything there. Yeah. That, no, like imagine it was that you night. like... Like reaching just like... Yeah, it was no just... Were, like, good pictures. No, it wasn't good at all. Like I was sending her very good high quality pictures and she and, like, was like... And like those were the ones she wanted. Yeah. That's what I thought was weird. Like she's definitely like, masturbating to these or something. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but we're going to continue. On the note of like delusional people, well, actually, this girl was not delusional. She got catfished. But speaking about the modeling agency lady, um, my dad randomly got a call like a month ago. Oh, is this the story you told us on Saturday? Yeah, my dad randomly got a call like a month ago, and it it was a random lady, and she was like, hey, Britt, like I'm, I'm going to be coming down this weekend for our engagement. And... um. You know, I'm excited. We have the venue. I thought about like the flowers and my dad was like, hold on. Who, what do you, you're, what do you mean? Like my dad's like, my dad had no idea who this girl was. And she was like, um, and he's like, I'm sorry, but I don't know who you are. And she's like, oh my God. And she was like, I knew it. And she was like, I had been texting you for the past year and I was coming down this weekend and we were going to get engaged. And he was like, I, I have no idea who you are. I've never talked to you. And she was like, I think it was a catfish. And she was like, we met online. And did she say like when they met online? Like what year? It was like a year they had been talking. So like a year. That's and so crazy. It was like, apparently she was, she was telling my dad, she was like, I am a very wealthy woman. And um, you, which I guess is now not you, you were trying to get access to certain Bitcoin accounts I had and stuff. And she was like, I really just wanted to be engaged first before any of that happened because then now it's both of our assets. And um, he was like, again, I'm sorry, but this was never me. And she was like, I, she was like, I had a feeling and she was like, I hired a private investigator so that I could figure out like where you really live, what your number really is. And that's how I got your phone number. Cause he was like, how did you get my phone number? Cause just imagine getting a call like that. So he was just so baffled. I can't believe people are still catfishing because I remember like, I don't know, remember like what exactly year it was, but do you remember the MTV show Catfish? Oh, yeah. Like I that was like such a show from like long ago that it really like boggles my mind that we are still catfishing and well now 2024, I guess I was 2023. But, like it's just like I it, it all just starts with like them wanting like money out of you and like the people mm -hmm. are so delusional to the fact like, like oh yeah like let me give you my money to them come find out it's not even the real person and yeah i just that's... can't imagine like being in her position thinking that like i know and that's what my dad was like i really do feel bad for her yeah. because she fully thought like they were gonna get engaged and and like i i found her facebook she has like pictures of him like oh look how cute like and i was like oh my where god where did she get these pictures does Britt have like I guess like my dad has like a Facebook or LinkedIn or TikTok yeah. and like just this guy because like insane. my dad is like I would say like an attractive older guy so they like he I think this has happened to him before where he has pictures that have gone taken yeah and um so like they were pictures just from like accounts he's had he has and she literally had pictures like on her Facebook like oh like I was like, I feel bad for her, but no, I feel so bad because like yeah. she really truly believed that they were gonna get engaged. But that's what, yeah, that's the thing with catfishing is like, what is the motive? What is the benefit? Um, the only thing I can think of is them trying to get money, which yeah. is what was happening to her. Which thankfully she didn't give any money. But catfishing, I think nowadays is harder because again, just reverse image search. Like I do that for so much stuff, just with things and people and. You'll, like, find out a lot of, like, funny stuff when you do that. Yeah, no, there was this, on TikTok, I got this video, and it was this girl who was talking about, like, um, there was an account that got, like, really viral in her high school. Like, she was talking to everyone there, saying that, like, she was going to be coming to the school, just wanted to make friends, like, connections, all this stuff. And people were like, oh, my God, like, she seems so nice. She's so pretty. Like, we can't wait to meet you. 
And then school starts. She never shows up. This girl, and everyone's like, well, where is she? She's like, the girl's like making excuses. She's like, oh, I think she was saying like how some family member died, something, something. But she never came to school. And she would keep posting on Instagram like these really just weird pictures. And everyone at their high school was like, okay, this is kind of weird. Years later, they're all in high school. Um, This girl, or the girl, the girl they thought it was, um, they saw a picture of her and was like, oh my gosh, this is the girl that's supposed to come to our high school and never came. Click on it. Come to find out, it's like a whole nother girl. So they're like, wait, who was the girl that we thought was going to come to our high school? Apparently, that girl was like stealing this other girl's picture for like years straight and the girl had no idea the girl literally like literally lived in like two different states like over like Mm -hmm. and everyone was like what the fuck that is so weird like i just don't that happens i've had that happen someone dm me like a tinder account that was like my pictures and they're like is this you and i was like no and I was like, but I I didn't even really care. I'm like, there's nothing you can do. Like, people are going to take it. I just and wonder, it, like, who is doing this kind <clears> of stuff. And it's, like, all off Instagram. So, yeah. it's like, people are going to do that. But so, speaking of, like, weird things, I just saw, it, or, like, speaking of TikTok, I just saw this TikTok, and I did not know this, and this was just so, like, gross and weird to me. But mm-hmm. did you know, like, um, Hugh Hefner and Marilyn Monroe are buried next to each other? And... I think I've heard something about that. They're buried like not in the ground, but like in a like in a wall. So they're kind of like on a wall and the casket above her, the guy, I don't know, Hugh Hefner's next to her, but the guy that bought the casket or the slot above her had bought it. She owned that thing before she died, I think. Mm -hmm. So he knew that she was going to be below her Mm -hmm. and he, um, he requested to be buried upside down so that he could be like on top of her for eternity. And I was like, that is just so fucking sad. Who, who's the guy? I think he was just some like wealthy businessman or something. Mm-hmm. But it's like, like no relation to her. Like, no, just because like being a perv, like and I was yeah. like, she was like sexualized and harassed like her whole life and like in death when you're supposed to have peace. And like, I guess, you know, that is just yeah. her physical body there. But like. But just like, like still, you, like, just like her spirit and stuff, and like the fact that like that's what he wanted to do when when he died was he, to be buried like that and for it's, her. Yeah, like on top, so that she's laying, you know, like yeah. this, and he's like on top of her. His name's Richard Poncher. Yeah, his name's Richard Poncher. What? Who is he? Yeah, what does he do? Um, let me see. It says Hugh Hefner is buried next to her. Mm-hmm. And he's Oh. How much how much do you know how much it was? A businessman from LA. Okay. That is so crazy. Yeah, so they just clarified it's like a business guy from LA bought it, but I did see and this made me feel better. Maryland's cuz the front of them are made out of like granite and then they have little plaques like saying yeah. their name. Maryland's is like stained red because everyone goes and does a red kiss mark for her and like oh, he, the rest of theirs are all like the same color. So I was like everyone goes and like gives a little kiss and she always yeah. has like fresh beautiful flowers in there so i was like that's cute that's like she was nice. someone who was very loved like, yeah she was so loved and like like also speaking of like princess diana like i'll just see things and i love her I, it like literally makes me just so like she was the first person ever to like touch someone that had hiv or something yeah something and like that. everyone believed like you could get it from touching them and she she went oh she disobeyed so many of the royal beliefs because she didn't agree with them and she was just such a loved person and it's so like interesting just as at our age we didn't we weren't around for a lot of this just hearing this history is like so interesting to me and um she was just such like an amazing person do you think think that they that they hold like they plotted it to kill her princess diana or Marilyn? no Princess. i think both of them were like not that's like a whole thing, like, you know, with the government and like when people mm-hmm. have too much power and in a cold too. Like, yeah, um, I think like Marilyn, it was like all plotted. She was so such in like influence and powerful and like beautiful woman and like sex figure, honestly. And that's what she became mm-hmm. from the public, not by choice. Yeah. But I think it was like a whole scheme. I think she I think she was like killed and taken out. I think and so I too. think Di- Princess Diana, too, she. They didn't like she was disobeying. She was 
But she was like such an amazing person. Like, fuck your royal beliefs. Like, I know. But that's just like the fucked up part about like royal families mm-hmm. is that like the um, like if they don't like you, they don't like you. And like mm-hmm. with them, like if they want to take someone out, they easily could plot something to just yeah. like like you're done. Like, and, and it's like in a royal family, you have like an a uh, caravan of cars like you mm-hmm. have yours and like a few in front of you, a few behind yeah. you. Like there's no like the accident just doesn't make sense they claim like she was alone like that car she was in was the is solo like there's no security i'm like the royal family would never travel alone like stuff is weird but you can't like really question it too much and um that's kind of what i wanted to get into uh, with the michelle obama thing we we're talk i was telling her about this before we started filming was michelle obama was just talking about like she knows too much and she's kind of scared for the future between war and AI and just all that stuff. And, um, I've heard some about this and too. like Mark Zuckerberg just built like a $200 million bunker and well, all these people are building bunkers. Well, have you seen the new Netflix movie that Leave came out? Leave the world behind, which they produced. Yeah. Yeah. They're all saying that like that movie is like a sign for people to like open their eyes and be like, listen, like this is what's really going on. Like you like, all these people like know stuff like now you guys need to know stuff like yeah because i've been seeing a lot of stuff about people like not well not just people but, like celebrities like building these bunkers it's like why like, what do you well guys that's know? why it's like if michelle and barack obama have never produced a movie and that's mm-hmm. the way they can do it because they can't speak out or they'll be like Mm-mm. you know they'll get in trouble so in the movie it's all hypothetical just a you know idea but it's like weird how accurate it is. And maybe they're trying to tell you something. And that's like so scary. But going back into like you can't think back too much about it. And I was just telling my brother this. Like, I mean, what am I going to do? Like, we're all in this together. If we get bombed or have to go to war or what, like whatever. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be the last person on earth. Like, all these billionaires with the bunkers, they're going to be the last four people. Like, yeah. I'd rather be, get taken out with everyone and else. And also, like, we're just regular like citizens like when am i gonna find the money and the time to go and build a bunker yeah. like if something happens like it is sucky but like we at the end of the day have to deal with it but like i can't just go build a bunker yeah like- well, and i don't honestly i don't think i would want it if there's like a nuclear blast or something like i don't think i would want to like we're all gonna die like i would want to go yeah. with everyone else like why be the last person on earth with a radioactive earth no food no animals no sunshine like that's fucking depressing like you know and that also is something like who knows what will happen in the future but like it also i'm glad that it is something that's like not really talked about because i feel like a lot of people like will start just fearing their lives instead of just Mm -hmm. living it like we can't control if something like that's out of our hands like we are we can do whatever we can do in our lives but like we can't go and tell them like don't bomb us like they're not gonna listen to just us you and know that's like, like that's out of our hands that's something bigger yeah and that's the whole thing like i'm an avid alien believer i know oh, there's no, aliens, there's out, aliens there. out there but i and the government knows but the reason they can't like tell us is because everyone's gonna freak out but they've been like slowly like mm-hmm. trying to tell us i think us. they're trying to get it out there but um so like going back into like the uncertainty like that's the also like i was just telling you about Mm -hmm. being this age and this generation and this and that it's like so much uncertainty for us and especially in the day and age we are with like ai like so many of our careers are going to be taken by ai like oh my gosh i have to talk about something with this and that's what i'm that's what i was going to go into is like there's just nothing you can like do about it and like i'm just along for the ride if we all get drafted for a war then we all go together if we all get bombed then we all go together like it's just you you can't live every day in fear of that like Mm -hmm. you can only live in fear of that the day it happens and that's the day it happens and it may not happen like i don't know but you know it's just like scary to think about did you (laughs) did you see that or maybe you have i don't know but i came across a video on my tiktok again love tiktok um these people created this robot. It was like AI, like it could have a conversation with you. They were asking the AI what they think that robots will do like in the next couple of years, whatever. They The the robot was telling them that they're going to take over like everyone and that like they are, they are what's going to rule. Do you remember AI came out like two years ago? I remember when it like for no, maybe not. It came out like a long time ago, but like like w- <laughs> what? But like, but, what? Oh, <laughs> but like, um, 
It wasn't really like the way it is Main, now. Yeah, it, it became mainstream now. Yeah, because we have like Snapchat AI. Everything Chat is GPT. AI and it's slowly and slowly getting more and more advanced. And that's like what happened. A story just came out that like Tesla was trying to hide. But two years ago in the Tesla production line, there's they, robots that do stuff and it attacked a human. I and saw like that. Hurt, there was blood everywhere. And like that is something straight out of a movie. And it's so scary to think that like, what, now we're going to fear robots killing us at work? Yeah, that's like fully our reality, but... No, for sure. I went. What to, do you do? Like I said, like, what are we going to do about it? I went to Checkers the other day, and you know how... <laughs> you know how at the window, they're like, oh, like, what can I get you? It was an automated voice messaging yes, thing. I've seen this, like, and I was like, everything. Why am I uncomfortable talking to, like, an AI through a Checkers? Checkers is so milkshake. funny, too. I don't think I've ever ate at Checkers. I, I get their frozen fries at the grocery store. They're good, but... I think it sounds good, but I want to try Arby's. Um, they really have the meat, but <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we're gonna like wrap it up. This episode was a little bit longer because we wanted. I think like there's just a lot of stories compared to the first episode. Um, it'll be all three of us for the next episode. Indigo, um, we'll like talk about that. She couldn't be here today just because. There's like miscommunication, but it ended up working out because I was like, I honestly wanted to do a solo episode with each of them just to, you know, like establish yeah. that. So now I feel like you guys understand Indigo and kind of her story where we met that happened and like Our me and Sophia. Stories. And um, so the next episode will be all three of us and it'll be pretty interesting because there's still so many topics there's that we just so, so much. We just need all three of us to get into those. And um, it'll be nice uh everyone to see all three of us just yeah and chit chat indigo is going to go to miami for the weekend to see her friend and then you're going to the cabin or, or a cabin with your friends and mm -hmm. then i'm going to be at home but we're going to have to debrief like what indigo did in miami and then also there's just like some other stories so there's just so much i can't wait to get into everything this is so yeah, fun yeah i know it's so fun it goes by so fast but i oh also we're i wanted to get into this really quick so I wanted to say also, um, I know you're watching this on YouTube, but we are on TikTok and we are about to be on Spotify and is there any more Instagram? So follow us all there. And, um, especially like audio people, um, Spotify is always there and yeah, we're going to close this out. Do you have any last words? No, I just can't wait to start yapping on here about everything. That's all. I know. And <laughs> I'm getting more comfortable, um, there's like so many details I'm just like scared to say that are just so funny. I know, but I feel like it is a little weird like talking like with the camera, but like it's something that you can get so used to. I feel it like we'll does be just fine. feel like a one on one conversation, but there's just like 15 cameras right here. No, there literally is. <laughs> I, I was saying in the last episode, I wanted to insert a clip of like what we're seeing. So I'm going to do that right now. Yeah, there's like a bunch of little lights, cameras, like. It's really like it really is like a whole production. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. But um, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Here's Sophia. 